So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that I am a total fangirl for the Nikon L35 AF. If you can't tell, I am somewhat of a collector slash hoarder of this camera as I live in fear of it breaking and me not having a working one in my possession. I did a brief video on this camera way back when I started the channel, but I thought it was worth a revisit as this camera does come in many models and also has a few little quirks. And I have some tips and tricks to share with you guys to kind of troubleshoot that. And I also do get a lot of questions on YouTube and on Instagram when someone's first purchased this camera or they're wondering about like a different type of model. So what I've done is timestamped at the bottom of the video. So if you want to go to a specific part, it'll be a lot easier for you. But otherwise, um, enjoy this little overview of the best point and shoot of all time, in my opinion. A little note on the price of these cameras, they have gone up significantly like many other point and shoots. So I first bought mine for about 30 or $40 in a market that was five or six years ago. And it was listed as one of the alternatives to like the T4 or the T2 at that time. So it's definitely cheaper than the T2. Um, I did do a quick eBay search and I found that a fully functional, like tested, good to excellent condition um, L35 AF is around $300 to $500 Australian. I'm not sure what it's like in America. And then one that is not working or being sold for parts is sort of $200 Australian and under. So a lot of them will say that it had, they have a sticky shutter or doesn't fire up, like won't turn on, like that sort of thing. And I'll cover that later in the video on how you can maybe get that camera to work. Um, but yeah, they're definitely not like on the very cheap end of the scale for point and shoots, but they're not quite as expensive as the T4 and they're definitely not as expensive as like a Contax or even a Mew. I have avoided doing any sort of overly technical videos or gear reviews and talking about that sort of stuff on the channel. It's definitely not my favorite topic and it's not where I shine. But in this case, uh, the L35 AF is very close to my heart and I feel like it's sort of like my signature camera. So I thought it would be fun to go over it. I do actually know quite a lot about it. Um, and yeah, I thought that since I get a lot of questions about it, it would be helpful to people to um, share it. And I have a lot of example photos and videos of me using this. So hopefully it's a good resource for people who either own one or are wanting to buy one. I'm gonna start with the original and the best, the Nikon L35 AF. This camera features a 35 millimeter five element F 2.8 lens, which is quite legendary. Um, this was Nikon's first attempt at an autofocus camera. And aside from a few build quality issues and quirks, I think they pretty much nailed it. So there are some defining features of the um, L35 AF that the other cameras don't have. So it has a 46 millimeter um, filter thread. So it allows you to put a range of filters on there. So if you're into shooting black and white, that's really good. And it just generally opens up a whole world of creativity that you wouldn't get in say like the T2 or the T4. Useful to know as well, the camera will meter through the filter. So I have a UV filter on my one sort of in lieu of a lens cap and it just helps to protect the lens obviously. And yeah, I hate lens caps. So I just put UV filters on everything and I'm good to go. So another great feature of this camera is that you can manually set the ISO, which is quite rare for a point and shoot and a really great feature as it means you can push and pull your film, you can over and under expose and it just generally gives you uh, way more control. We all love control. So the autofocus system on this camera works by holding the shutter button down like halfway and at the bottom of the viewfinder, you'll see little icons. So you've got like a person for portrait, a couple of people for like a group photo and then a mountain for like landscape or further away photos. I don't really use that feature because I'm always shooting things that are really far away and I'm just lazy and hopeful and this autofocus has literally never failed me. So yeah, it's definitely um, a point and shoot with a very strong autofocus, which is something I'm definitely looking for in a camera. Another cool uh, thing about this camera and like a little piece of trivia is the guy who designed this camera also designed the DeLorean and the Ferrari, 
or some kind of version of that. Um, I remember hearing that or reading that somewhere. So if you know any more about it, please comment below so people can, um, you know, fact check that and like read more about it. Cause I think that's really interesting. Um, but yeah, like the sort of red stripe there, you can um, really see like the design language of like the Ferrari and stuff coming through. So yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know anything about cars clearly because I said the Ferrari like there's just one Ferrari and obviously there's heaps of Ferraris so let's just move on I think that's like people will appreciate that a little bit of humor so the flash on this camera is some um, fully automatic and it will just pop up when it reads that you need flash and I get a lot of questions about this and it's quite hard to explain and it's definitely hard to type. So I thought I would show you guys, but you can kind of uh, make the flash pop up if you want to in a photo, which I do a lot when I'm shooting at night. Um, the look of this flash on this camera, I don't know what it is. Um, I did read that something about it being like offset gives that really kind of like Terry Richardson sort of flash look, which I have found I've got a lot um, even when I'm like not shooting portraits, like it's just it's its whole own look and I love the flash on this camera So if you would like the flash to come up Just before you take the photo um, if you hold your hand over the lens So that it like thinks it's dark and then push down on the shutter button Just halfway like as if you were using that focus thing um, the flash will just pop up and the Light will come on as well. And then you can just use the flash um, same way if you think the flash might pop up and you don't want it to when you're taking a shot you can hold your finger over the flash and it will simply just stop it from popping up so that can also be useful as well um yeah i've had a lot of questions about that someone did ask me whether or not that affected the exposure um and i don't know for sure if it does or doesn't but i haven't experienced any uh, like exposure issues in the photos where I've used both of those um, like tactics so yeah if anyone knows more about that please comment below but yeah overall like I just think the flash is like so sick on this so yeah definitely be like getting it to pop up it's very cool Ooh. <laughs> so a couple of other quick features that this camera has that the other ones don't it has a backlight compensation button, which is just here. So you can just pull it down. Um, it adds two stops of light and can be really handy if you are worried about silhouetting or you know someone standing in front of a window or something like that. Um, it has a self timer, which is great. And also a tripod mount. The rewind process on this camera is something else that I've had a few questions about. Um, it is a two step process. So, uh, it's it's actually numbered on the bottom, but it can be hard to see and it's a little bit daunting when you get a new camera so um, one and two so you just push the um, What's this called? I don't know switch. Push this switch over and then press this button down um, And hold and it'll rewind your film I do find these kind of boxy 80s cameras tend to sound like really kind of dodgy when they're like rewinding film and you're like, oh, like, is this going to work? But it seems to always work. So I'm trying not to say so. <laughs> Moving on to the Nikon L35AF2, often um, sort of mistaken for the original one, but they are really, really different. So this has um, no filter thread, um, it has no option to manually set the ISO, and it's a four element lens as opposed to the five element sonar lens on the um, original. So quite a few differences there. It's definitely not as good, but it is still a very good camera. So like I said, not as many features, um, does have a um, timer and also a tripod mount. Rewinds the same, but doesn't have that backlight compensation. And also um, instead of the little uh, lever on the top, you've got a lever um, down here that you pull to open it up and turn it on. The design is a little bit more modern and the build quality is slightly improved, I'd say, but it does still have a lot of the same issues that the um, like L35 AF, the original does too. So yeah, I mean, definitely still worth picking up. Um, I believe King Japes just did a video on this camera. Um, I'm pretty sure he had the two and he was raving about it, like just loving it. So yeah, it's definitely still worth picking up, but if I had the choice, I would choose the original. Next up is the L35TW 
AF. It all gets very confusing. So this one is a twin lens, hence the TW. The wide lens is a 38 millimeter F 3.5 four element. And the tele lens is a 65 millimeter F 5.6. So my understanding of how this works is it's sort of like a magnifying glass coming over the lens, like similar to like a tele converter. Um, but comment below if, if that's wrong or you know more about it. Um, it is quite difficult to find out information on this camera. Um, I have a couple of videos of me using it. I own two because one is broken, unfortunately, and that happened during a video. Long, like, beeping noise. But I was lucky enough to find another one for a very cheap price. This version also has a macro feature. Um, I don't really know who's doing macro photography on a point and shoot, that seems kind of weird. Um, I did try it out, or I think my partner tried it out when he took photos of me in a video. Um, but. The shutter button on this is a little bit uh, delayed. Like it's not as like sort of urgent and responsive as the other ones. That's something I noticed when I was shooting it. So I like hit the shutter button and I was like, oh, did I take the photo? And then would like move the camera, you know, that old one. So um, just be wary of that. When I first got this camera, I wasn't very confident that it would be as good as the other ones, um, just cause it's got a twin lens and I thought it was just sort of like a cheaper kind of iteration and yeah, it didn't have much confidence, but um, I've used it a few times and it's really, really good. I was really surprised. Hot tip on this camera, it has a kind of secret battery compartment. So um, at the bottom, it takes a CR2025 battery. Uh, they're like those small kind of coin looking batteries. You might have to go to like a specialist place to um, get it. Um, and yeah, you just need a screwdriver and some patience and you will be able to change that battery. Uh, I've seen a lot of these that are listed not working, uh, won't fire up and people obviously change the main batteries, but maybe they don't know about that one. So keep an eye on that when you are like looking to buy one or if you find one in a thrift store or something like that. So that's about it. Um, this is a real chunky monkey camera, but it does feel a lot more sort of robust than the other ones, I suppose. And it's got like a bit more of a grip on the side here. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a lot chunkier, a lot um, bigger than the other ones. So as I mentioned before, one of these isn't working. I took it out on a shoot and it seemed to be working totally fine. It's in really, really good nick. And all of a sudden halfway through the roll, it just started making this really like awful high pitched noise and then wouldn't take photos anymore. So yeah, um, it's completely dead. I'm pretty sure it was like the capacitor for the flash. Um, and that's what was making that noise. So I don't know what it would be like, you know, how expensive it would be to get something like that repaired, but I do have another one. So, you know, alas, um, but I just thought I'd mention it. I'm not sure if that's a common fault of these cameras, but yeah, something to uh, look out for, I guess. So I read somewhere that Nikon made a twin lens camera in sort of competition with what the other brands were doing at the time. I'm not sure how true that is. Uh, don't quote me on it, but yeah, that's what I heard. And you can kind of tell when you look at this um, Canon Shaw Shot Tele that I have, that I've also done a video on. So check it out if you haven't seen it, because this is also a really great camera. Um, but yeah, you can kind of tell like a little bit, like they sort of look the same, like chunky, and they've, you know, got like, that sort of like protruding like lens because of the, the twin lens, obviously. So yeah, I just thought that was interesting. Um, I did do a little bit more research on that uh, back when I got the camera and I was talking to someone on Instagram. I can't remember who you are, but I'll put you up on the screen. Uh, and they sent me an article that was really cool. Um, and it was all about these sort of twin lens cameras that are like very 80s and very sort of like underappreciated. So yeah, there are a whole range of them out there. I get a lot of questions about these cameras not working and how to fix them. And I have a few little tips and tricks that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, these are all common problems in the first three models that I've covered. So the L35, the L35 AF2 and the TW. So the build quality on them isn't the best and they are renowned for the um, battery doors being really flimsy and sort of like breaking off um, altogether or not holding the battery in properly so it doesn't make the connection to then like turn the camera on. This is an issue I had when I bought it about five years ago at a market. I was super excited. I was like, oh my God, I've been searching for this. Like 
um, put batteries in it, like bought film from a shop that was really expensive because I didn't have any on me because I wanted to use it straight away. And like the shutter button just like wouldn't go down and I was super depressed. Um, but I later found out that I could troubleshoot that. So hopefully you can too. Um, and if there are any listed on eBay that are like not working, this may be the issue. So yeah, the battery door is just this like tiny little piece of plastic that's like not, doesn't really have enough weight to it to hold the batteries in. Um, and I hear a lot of people complain about this, but you can still make your camera work um, like I do with both of mine actually, but this one's um, a lot worse. So I get like duct tape or like really strong tape um, and I just have to tape it up every time I want to use it, which is annoying, but it's better than paying like $400 for a new one, right? So yeah, um, that sort of just holds down the battery door. So you could test yours by um, like if, if yours isn't working, when you've got the batteries in, just like hold your thumb down really hard on the battery door and like press the shutter button. And it, if it takes the photo, then that's probably the issue. Um, and that is what I used to do until I was like, oh, I'll just tape it up. So you can do that. And also to kind of uh, strengthen it even more, you can fold up like a little tiny piece of like foil, like our foil, um, that's about the size of the top of the battery and just pop it in there. And that'll help to kind of like make the connection um, and, you know, fire up the camera. So I do that and then I also tape it up. And yeah, like I said, it is a little bit annoying, but I think it's uh, worth it for um, you know, being able to use the camera and not having to buy like one for you know, $400, $500. That leads me to the next camera, which is the Nikon L35AWAF. Um, this is an all weather camera, like in the name. And if you are put off by the build quality issues in the first three cameras, then this is the camera for you. It's extremely robust as it's uh, weatherproof. Um, and yeah, it's just a total brick. Like nothing is gonna break this guy down. <laughs> so bad, so bad. <laughs> so supposedly this camera can survive under uh, 10 feet of water, but obviously as uh, waterproof cameras and all weather cameras get older, uh, there's gonna be a certain amount of risk there in um, using it as it was when it was new. Um, I probably will not be submerging this in any water, but I would definitely use it as an all weather camera. So if it was raining, I would confidently take it out and just, you know, shoot and not worry, which I think is really good. So this camera has auto ISO, auto focus, but a manual flash. Um, it's also zone focusing. So a little bit different to the other ones and could be good for maybe like street photography. I don't know. So like I said, this thing is a total brick. It's really heavy. Um, Mine isn't in like perfect condition. I got this in like a bundle with a bunch of other cameras, but um, yeah, the sort of knob for the film door has come off. So um, I have to open it with pliers, which, you know, isn't a really big deal, but I just thought I'd show you the inside. So it's got like the um, pressure plate that a lot of waterproof cameras have to like keep the film like, you know, intact and like secure. And yeah, the ceiling looks pretty good, but like I said, I'm not gonna be taking it underwater. So uh, waterproof cameras are like a whole other like thing. Um, William Sheepskin recently did a video on the Nikonos and he went through uh, what he would do, what how he would buy one and what he would do before he shot one. And it was really comprehensive. So I'll link that below. And also uh, Jamie Maldonado has an amazing video on the Nikonos as well and got some like beautiful shots. So I'll link that below and you can have a look. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd share this one because yeah, I was super happy to own another L35 AF and um, this one, like I said, would be really handy for taking to the beach, like, you know, or just shooting in like wet weather or something like that. The most important feature of this camera and the reason why someone might choose it over the other um, L35s is the battery door. So it's not flimsy and plastic. Um, it's really solid and you just get like a coin or a screwdriver or something to um, open it up. And that's obviously due to the fact that it's like a weatherproof camera. So yeah, if you were really into the L35 AF and you wanted that like look, but you didn't want to deal with like, you know, shoddy build quality and all that sort of stuff, then this could be something that you could look at, I guess. All right, so that wraps up all of the L35s that I have. Um, but I just wanted to say that definitely the original is the best in my opinion. And if you are looking at buying one, definitely try and find just the L35 AF. I think it's definitely um, the best. And yeah, if you if you can afford it, go for that one. Um, just something about it is different. The, um, just the way that it renders, images it's really sharp 
but it's still got a lot of character so it doesn't look like too good um for some reason i feel like red looks really good i know that sounds really like silly i, I can't explain why but yeah anything that i take where there's like red in the frame especially if i use the flash like just something happens and it's just a look that i just can't resist um, i did go over some of the reasons why i love this camera um, that were a little bit more casual in my earlier video and I hate watching that video now. I like cringe. Um, but one of the reasons that I like this camera is the uh, vignetting like around the image, which I know a lot of people aren't into. Like they sort of complain about it, which was new to me because I, I really liked that. Um, I said vig, I said like, I said it wrong because I've never heard anyone say it. I've only seen it written down and it's French and I'm not French. I'm like lazy and Australian. So please excuse me if you do go and watch that video. Um, but yeah, I just rate this camera so highly and um, it's definitely getting more and more popular. So if you did want to get one, I'd get one now because I reckon they're just going to keep going up and up and up. Um, and a lot of people are kind of like saying like, this is my favorite camera, which is awesome. Like uh, the more people um, that use it, like that's cool. But yeah, I definitely get on it now, sooner rather than later. All right, so that's it for me. That was awful. <laughs> so that's it for me. I hope this video was helpful. Like I said, uh, technical like spec stuff isn't really my thing. So I'm sorry if I was kind of fumbling over stuff. Um, but yeah, I do know a lot about this camera in comparison to like what I know about other cameras. And um, yeah, I just really love point and shoots and I've had a lot of younger females message me about this camera saying that they've just bought it. Um, maybe it's their first film camera um, or they're just getting into it. So I wanted to try and make this like really simple and approachable. Um, that's my whole ethos with film photography and this channel. Um, I want to make it really approachable and seem welcoming to whoever is wanting to try out film photography and especially um, females as well. So don't forget to check out my Patreon. I'm posting really regularly on there and I would love it if you guys joined me. I also have prints available, um, a couple of prints actually taken with the um, L35AF. So even if you just want to check those out and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video guys. Thank you.